The future of our planet may very well depend on the green conservation technologies that are developed and utilized today. Although energy conservation, environmental planning, and reducing carbon footprints are all very important, preserving our freshwater supply should always be at the forefront. In one form or another, there is the same amount of fresh water on our planet today as there was before man walked the earth. Water is the building block for all life, and its role as a renewable resource is essential to our survival. Nearly 70% of the Earth's surface is covered by water, approximately 97% of which is salt water residing in our oceans. This leaves only 2.5% as fresh water. Of this fresh water, almost 70% is frozen in the polar ice caps. Of all the water on planet Earth, less than three quarters of one percent is fresh water available for human use. Pollution, misuse, and consumption are rapidly decreasing the sustainability of this natural resource. World population continues to increase at a dramatic rate, creating a massive demand for drinking water. In 1950, there were only 2.5 billion people on the planet. By 2010, the Earth's population had increased to 6.8 billion people. Experts now predict that by the year 2050, the Earth's population could exceed 9 billion people. The three greatest demands on our freshwater resources are crop irrigation, drinking water, and industry. One of the most widely used industrial applications for water is in cooling towers. A cooling tower is a simple piece of equipment designed to remove heat energy from water through the process of evaporation. Here's how a cooling tower works. Warm water from a heat source, such as commercial air conditioning or industrial equipment, is pumped to the top of the cooling tower. The warm water enters the cooling tower and is evenly dispersed over the tower fill. It then flows down the fill, which spreads the water over a larger surface area to increase evaporation and remove heat. Large fans draw air across the fill, which accelerates evaporation and further cools the water. The cooled water continues to flow down into the tower sump and back through the system to cool the heat source. As system water evaporates, only pure water is lost. All of the elements in the system water remain behind in less water volume. To make up for the water that is lost to evaporation, fresh water is introduced into the cooling tower through the makeup line. This fresh makeup water carries additional elements into the system water where they accumulate. The more water that evaporates, the greater the need for makeup water to replenish the system and the faster the concentration of elements build. To reduce the concentration of elements in the system, a bleed-off valve opens and dumps a portion of the system water to drain as wastewater. This wastewater discharge must also be replenished by adding more fresh makeup water to the system. Because makeup water carries fewer elements than the system water, it will slowly reduce system concentration. During normal operation, evaporation, bleed off, and makeup are balanced to maintain the proper water volume while creating a continuous open loop. This is how we build cycles of concentration. What are cycles of concentration? It is simply the measurement used to compare the level of elements in the system water to the level of elements in the makeup water. For example, if the incoming water has a concentration of 300 parts per million and the system water has a concentration of 900 parts per million, the system water is three times the level of the incoming water, or three cycles of concentration. How do cycles of concentration increase? We start by filling a cooling tower with fresh makeup water. Then we measure the level of elements in that water to determine its concentration, represented here by the two yellow dots in the tower. If the cooling tower evaporates 50% of the water, that pure water enters the atmosphere and is naturally recycled. However, 
the elements in the tower water remain behind in half the water volume. Fresh makeup water is added to the tower to replace the water that evaporated. This also adds 50% more elements to the tower water, increasing its concentration to one and a half times that of the makeup water. The tower is now said to be at one and a half cycles of concentration. If the tower evaporates half the water again, and fresh water is added to replenish the loss, the elements in the tower water will have increased another 50%. The tower now has twice the elements as the incoming water, which represents two cycles of concentration. As this process repeats, system cycles will continue to increase until they are controlled through bleed off, or they reach the concentration limit of the cooling tower. Controlling cycles of concentration and the elements in water are extremely important to the operation of a cooling tower. When the elements in water concentrate to a level that exceeds the saturation point of the water, they fall out of the solution and form scale. Scale formation is the main concern for all cooling tower operators because scale decreases system efficiency and if not controlled can lead to total system failure. A comprehensive water treatment program is utilized on all cooling towers to control the major problems that can occur. A scale inhibitor is used to control scale formation. A corrosion inhibitor is used to control corrosion. And a biocide is used to control biological growth. A programmable controller and commercial grade feed pumps are used to inject the correct ratio of these water treatments into the water based on monitored system variables. Although conventional water treatment programs use similar treatment products to control scale, corrosion, and biological fouling, it is the scale inhibitor alone that determines the amount of bleed off that is required to maintain system integrity. On average, standard water treatment programs maintain cooling tower systems at three cycles of concentration or less. To maintain three cycles, the bleed off rate will require one gallon of water to be dumped and replenished for every two gallons of evaporation. This represents a 33% waste. In 1996, Turlin Industries developed the CWT3 Cooling Tower Water Conservation Program. This program is capable of maintaining virtually any cooling tower system at 50 cycles of concentration or greater. Although the chemistry behind this technology is complex, its performance is reached through a relatively simple process. CWT3 has a molecular bonding strength that is 30 times greater than conventional scale inhibitors. This bonding strength allows CWT3 to significantly increase the saturation point of the system water. A simple analogy for this performance would be the comparison between Elmer's glue and super glue. Both have the ability to bond. One is simply much stronger than the other. The Turlin program incorporates industry standard corrosion inhibitors, biocides, and feed equipment. As a result, Upgrading to our advanced water conservation technology is as easy as replacing one treatment with another. Utilizing the Turlin program at 50 cycles of concentration requires only one gallon of wastewater for every 49 gallons of water that are evaporated. This reduces cooling tower wastewater discharge from 33% of the total water used to only 2%. This is a 31% reduction in the total water required by the cooling tower. The unprecedented performance and conservation advantage of the Turlin CWT3 technology will allow any company operating a cooling tower system to join the Green Global Water Conservation Initiative. More than 15 years of field experience in the practical application of this program gives us priceless knowledge and experience in operating high cycle cooling tower systems. Cooling towers are everywhere. They are used in a wide variety of process applications from cooling large industrial equipment to cold storage refrigeration. Cooling towers can be found in every major city on the planet. The widest use of cooling towers is to cool air conditioning systems in condominiums, large office buildings, sports stadiums, shopping malls, hospitals, and so on. 
Cooling towers also come in a variety of styles, shapes, and sizes. No matter what model of cooling tower is used, their common function is to accelerate the evaporation of water to remove heat energy and cool equipment. According to BOMA, the Building Owners and Managers Association International, commercial office buildings alone consume one-sixth of the world's fresh water supply in their cooling towers. To better understand the conservation and monetary savings this program can offer, we have analyzed county records to identify typical buildings that utilize cooling towers. For the following examples, we limited our calculations to buildings over 100,000 square feet. For example, cooling towers in Broward County, Florida currently waste more than 2 billion gallons of fresh water annually. 2 billion gallons of water and wastewater costs cooling tower operators over $17.9 million every year. If the cooling towers in Broward County were converted to the Turlin program, that 2 billion gallons of annual waste would be reduced to just 120 million gallons. This represents 1.8 billion gallons of water conserved every year. That would reduce the cooling tower operator's collective annual water and sewer costs by more than $16.9 million. Upgrading the systems in New York City would net an annual savings of 15 billion gallons of water and over $153 million in annual water savings. Tampa Bay, Florida would save 3 billion gallons of water and over $24 million annually. Denver, Colorado would save 1 billion gallons of water and over $6.5 million annually. And Dallas, Texas would save 1.3 billion gallons of water and $9.2 million annually. In these five major cities alone, the combined annual water savings potential totals 22.1 billion gallons of water and more than $209 million. By extrapolating these numbers to include all the cities in North America, the net result would be 354 billion gallons of fresh water conserved and $3.3 billion in annual savings. If we were to look beyond the United States, Europe would save 571 billion gallons of fresh water and $5.4 billion annually. Asia would save 2.6 trillion gallons of fresh water and $24.6 billion annually. To further this projection, the global water conservation potential of this program is estimated at 4.5 trillion gallons of fresh drinking water and $43.2 billion in annual savings.